This is the flatbed wagon 32mm. This is what your kit will end up looking like. What I'm actually showing you is in fact a 32mm version. If you're making a 45mm kit then it will obviously fit the larger track. So this is what you're going to be making. This is going to be the health and safety. Uh, it's a little bit boring, so while I'm reading it, you can have a look at a couple of Roundhouse engines. So here we go. Health and safety. What follows in this video is my method of constructing an MDF garden railway wagon. The methods I use are mine and are purely a way to an end. The glues I use can and are dangerous if abused or wrongly used. May I suggest that any adhesives or glues that you decide to use are fit for the purpose you're going to use them for. Please read all the manufacturer's guidance notes that accompany them and follow them religiously. I've been building kits now for over 15 years. If it goes wrong, it's my fault, full stop. I don't want your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, mother or father contacting me and saying it's my fault their beloved one's got their hands stuck to the kitchen table and are waiting for the fire brigade to come because they watch my video. This video is shown as a demonstration of my method. You must follow it as you feel it's fit, correct and safe. Always use superglue in a well ventilated area. This is quite a major warning. Do not use a cotton or wool based cloth to wipe off superglue. It will react, it will smoke, it will heat up and may even catch fire. I use one type of wood glue, Evo stick wood adhesive. I list those three glues but obviously others are available. It's your choice, you may have a preference or from previous experience. You'll need some elastic bands, various sizes depending on which model you're going to be building. But a good average one is 70 to 80 diameter, that's millimetres, and it's about 2 millimetres thickness of rubber. You'll need a knife and other bits and bobs, general modelling knife, the ones with the break off blade seem ideal. A damp cloth is useful for wiping off excess glue, some kitchen towel or loo roll, some long nose pliers and some spring loaded clips. Which I'm warning you again, do not use cotton or wool based cloth to wipe off super glue. Okay, so that's the end of the health and safety. So please sit back, watch the video through and then start to build the wagon and enjoy it. Thank you. And these are the general tools that I use to build the models. Um, I use two types of super glue, both from tool station. We've got a a very runny one uh, which is a bit like water and then we've got a thicker one which is a bit like wallpaper paste um, a thick oil almost and what I do is I've got a couple of little caps off of milk bottles which I pour into and keep one for the thin and one for the thick and I use a bent paper clip to dip and Put the glue onto the various parts we're building. Need a sharp knife, a pair of pliers, an assortment of elastic bands. Um, may need some other bits as we go along, but those are the general tools that we use. I also to label my bottles thick and thin. It's very easy to pick up the wrong one at the wrong time, and the little container is labelled thick and thin as well. Another set of tools that may be useful and assist with building. Are these spring loaded clamps uh, which are available from places like tool station they're not very expensive you'll see later on in the video where these will be used to clamp the under frames together rather than using a pair of pliers so if you've got these in your box they'll be useful these are the parts required as a kit to make the 32 millimeter flatbed truck These are the parts to construct the 32mm shell of the flatbed wagon. Uh, you need the base, two ends, two sides, and we'll be using this as a reference to get a 90 degree angle in a moment. So the first thing to do is to clip it all together using an elastic band. 
which I will now show you. So this becomes the inside. Two notches there go into the two big slots there. So we've got the big lump underneath and a small bit on top. And we add the side pieces. It can only go one way. Handy having three hands here, but we don't have three. Not easy, but it's possible. Right, now we have to get the elastic band over the whole lot. Right, adjust the elastic band so it's just on the little nick of each one. There we go. And lay it down onto a flat surface. We have to do this gluing process in two actions. The first is to glue the base to the sides, but not the ends on yet. So for this I use thin glue. So I'll get some thin glue out. Now, while pushing down gently on the middle piece, pull the outer two in. And we're just going to glue the two small areas there, first of all. So now, a small drop in each position. And a little bit so it does wick down inside. I'll try and zoom in a little bit so you can see the zoom. I'm not sure. That may be a bit better. And then we move up to the end. Again, keeping pressure and pulling in on both sides. We're just going to touch a bit of super glue into these joints. Just a small amount. Give it about 10 seconds. And we can turn it round. And we can do the other end. Again, slight pressure down and pull in from the sides. Again, give it about 10 seconds. Okay, now we have to glue the ends on, which are obviously a bit floppy. So this is where we use this piece to give us a nice 90 degrees to put it against. 
So any ones of the end frames will do. So we drop it in so it's on the base, flat, and then we pull the, the back upright and push the base in so we make a good 90 degrees with the base. Finger on the top, hold it in position, and then we add a little bit of glue into each corner. A bit of glue in the middle, but obviously not on the piece that you're holding for the 90 degrees. And again, we hold that nice and firm for about 10 seconds. Right, now we turn it round and we do exactly the same for this end, being careful not to knock the other end out of alignment. So in, push up tight, so it's at a nice 90 degrees, and out with the glue again. Hold it again, about 10 seconds. And gently take the piece out. Right, so that's now our frame done and everything should be set up nice and square. So we now need to put that aside for about 10 minutes to make sure the super glue is dry properly. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, we can fit the ball races to the frames. So you will need frames numbered four, frames numbered five, and the four ball races. And the ball races mark, fit, and go in from the rear into item number four and then drop item number five on top and they'll lock into each other because the ball race is proud and turn it upside down and lay it down do exactly the same with the other one ball race is in from the back so you can see the actual engraving and item number five goes on top and we'll drop in to the holes turn over. So now we're going to spread some glue. Again we use the thin super glue around each bearing. Just a little smear is all that's needed. Turn it round, do the other side, just wipe off any excess with your finger, And that's the bearings fixed. We use the other piece on the underneath to stop the bearings popping up while they're gluing in position. So again, keeping those joined together, put them to one side to dry for about 10 minutes. 
But that's the shell now dry, so the next part we're going to fit is the overlays, which have the engraving on, the two ends and the two sides. So we can now remove the elastic band, it's stuck a little bit, and yep, yeah, everything is fairly rigid and nice. So this is the next job now, is to actually glue these pieces to the ends. We've got to do it in such a way that everything lines up perfectly. And this is how we do it. This job is best done using a, an Evo stick wood adhesive because you can't afford to get this one wrong and you may have to move it around a little bit. So what we have to do is, is to we'll be gluing this side here, trying not to get it where various holes are. And then once the glue's on there, on a flat surface, fingers each end and then we offer up the overlay and gently bring it up and using our fingers we guide it in on each end until it's flush each end and it should be flush with the top then while we've still got time with the glue we have a quick look make sure it's flush flush on the ends and we're good to go. If you have to move it, you can move it, and because it's PVA, you can still pop it off and start again if you have to. So this is what we're now going to do. But my glue won't come out. Right, that's unblocked my glue. So this is where we have to add the glue around. Trying to miss the holes. And spread it around a little bit with your finger. Again, we don't want too much. Wipe off any excess. Just a light covering. Right, make sure your fingers are clean, edges is nice and clean. Right, down onto your baseboard, nice and flat. Fingers each end. Offer it up on the bottom. Then we come up and guide it in very gently, while pushing down at the same time. And everything should line up nicely on the ends. Rub around with your finger and just lift it up and do a quick check that it's flush on there and there, flush on the top and flush on the bottom. So we can now put a little bit more pressure on it, lay it down on its face. Um, oh, it moves still, right? That's no good, then, is it? Right, let's go back to where we were. Okay, so we're filming this as it's happening. I didn't give it time to dry properly. Okay, flush with each end still. Let's give it another little gentle squeeze down. That's better. And squeeze out the excess glue. Finger on the top to take off the excess and wherever it's squeezed through. May get some coming through on the inside again using your knife, just sort of flick it out of the way. Okay. 
Try and make sure that there's none in the edges here. Otherwise the next piece won't fit. I think I put a little bit too much on. Check the other side. Let's clean it out a little bit. Right. So that's looking good. Now we have to do oh, a little bit there. Right, now we have to do the other end. So hopefully we have a, a bit more success doing the other end. I won't put quite so much on this time. Again we'll do a dummy run. Flat on the baseboard. Offer it up. Make sure it's flat and level all the way around. Right, it's uh, not quite so much glue this time. Flat on the base, fingers either side, offer it up gently, move it around to its level each end, as you can feel with your fingers, push down hard on the baseboard, and a quick check, Let's level both sides. On the top, so we can now push it in a bit firmer. And we we'll lay it down, this time hopefully it won't move. That's better. Firm pressure down. Clean off any excess. Again, make sure that these areas here are clear and here is clear. Okay, that's that bit done. Now we can fit the side pieces. Right, to fit the side pieces, we use super glue and we use the thick based one. We'll do a dummy run first of all. The small plank goes to the bottom, which should line up with the plank on the side. You'll see that there's a little recess there. It will go into and drop down onto, it won't go any further. And there's one on the other side. And that helps with the alignment. So we're going to lay super glue along there. Very gently then drop in that end up against the end, finger on there to hold it, let it drop down and then guide the other end in to the recess. Then just smooth down with your finger and then we'll take the excess glue off with the finger off there. So we're now going to do it for real. So we just put a bit of super glue along, not a lot's needed. And then spread it out a bit. There we go. Again, you can use PVA if you want to, but I use super glue. In with the end. Just gently hold it proud. In with the other end. Push them down into the recess. Run your finger along. Remove the excess glue, give it a squeeze, there we go. Now we do the other side, do a trial run as well, in and in at the other end, 
that makes sure you don't have any bits of glue left over and it does fit. Again, a few spots of super glue along the end. And spread it a bit. Again, making sure the small plank is to the bottom. In on the end, drop it gently down into the other end, push down, remove any glue with your finger, and a gentle squeeze all the way along. And there we have one basic shell made. So the next job after that is to fit the underframes. But before we do that, we have to fit the axle back axle box covers to the underframes. So we need to locate frame with number eight on it, both sides, and the four axle box covers. Now, the way I tend to do this, I can't show you because I've got to do it with a magnifying glass to get the alignment right, is I use a thick super glue and just put a tiny drop in that position there, just in the middle. And I take the knife and just push it gently into one of the axle boxes so it holds it firmly. And then very gently line up over the engraving marks and drop it down onto the super glue and just place your finger on and that's it it's glued in position and then we move on and do the second one the third and the fourth now i'll go ahead and do that now and show you the results when i've done it i've now done that on the four axle boxes and there we go So we can now go ahead and fit the frames to the underside. So we're going to need all the frames, a pair of wheels and the shell. Right, so we have all the frames laid out. And we're going to start to assemble them. So we have the basic shell. And there's two holes each side at each end. Now, the outer holes are used when we're building a 45mm one and the inner holes are used when we're building a 32. So this is a 32 version. So locate the item that's got number 5 on it. And you can define 5 because it's got the lugs at each end. And then with the numbers facing out, because this is a 32, we use the inner one. So locate the lug into the inner one. And then we bend it as we pull it out, quite an acute bend, until it clips in. And then we do the same on the other side. Again, make sure the numbers are outside, into the inner hole. Again, flex it, drops in. So now we start to build up the frames. Now we fitted number five, the numbers go six, seven, eight, nine coming out and go four, three, two, one going in. It's important to always have the numbers facing out. So we're going to build up inside first of all. So that's number five. So we now fit number four, which is the one that we fitted the ball races to. That's number four drops in. Then we fit number three. Number two, number one with the slots in it. Then we do exactly the same on the other side. One with the ball races in, which is number four, but again making sure that the numbers face outwards. Fit number three. The ones with the brake gear, number two. The ones with the slots, number one. 
So having got the inner parts doing, we're now going to fit the stretchers, which are these two items, and they go into the little slots, which was on position piece number one. So we put it into the first one, slide him down, and he drops in quite nicely. And we do the same on the other side, into the first one, and then drops in quite nicely. Next job is to put the wheels in. It seems a little bit violent what we've got to do, but it does work. So we have to gently prise them apart, offer the wheeling on one side into the bearing, into the other, pull back together, make sure the spreader pieces in between is there. Give them a little spin, turn them round. I do the same on this side. I'll zoom in a little bit so perhaps you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. There we go. Right again, open them out a little bit with your fingers, drop the wheel in into the other side, close them up. Sometimes the other end pops out. Again, hold firmly, check the wheel spins. At this point, we now need to add a little bit of lubrication to the bearings. Now for this, you can use a three-in-one oil. Uh, I'm just looking for my oiler at the moment. I'll just zoom back a little bit. There we go. For me, I've got my oil in a syringe. If you want one, I expect a good junkie can supply you one. Uh, right, okay. So a little bit of oil where the balls are on each side, just a touch, and then on the other side, there we go, that didn't hurt a bit, and quick spin, move the oil around, quick spin, move the oil around. Now we can build up the rest of the frames. So we had five there, so the next one we had is six. Again, making sure the numbers stay outside. We had seven. We had eight. And the last one, which is nine, which doesn't have a number on it. And turn them over. And again, we start the other side. We got five. We had six. We had seven, we had eight, we had nine. So that's all the frames nicely in. Push down firmly. Check the wheels still rotate, which they do, which is good. So the next thing we have to do is to glue them in position. Now for this you'll need a pair of pliers, some thin super glue, and something to spread it around with. Now I'll zoom in a bit so you can see what we're doing. Right, the first thing we do is make sure they're all pushed down firmly. And we spread a little bit of super glue, which is the runny one, along the leading edge there. Now, so we'll move it around a bit so it all goes down between the joints. And I tend to Add a little bit on the inside and then using the pliers pull it together. Another alternative is to use the spring loaded clamps which are available from Tool Station. Um, they're a few quid uh, but they may be more useful than using pliers and if you're going to be building more of these wagons then they would probably be quite useful. So we've squeezed that one together, now we move over to the other side, add the thin glue, it doesn't want to come out, oh there we go, oh too much, okay, not to worry, move it around a bit so it soaks down between all the joints, 
that's um, down in the corner there. Take your pliers and squeeze the joint together and hold it in the middle with your hand as well at the same time. Count to about five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's that end done. Turn it round. And now we're going to do the other end. I'll zoom in again, I think. Might help. There we go. Right. Push it down. Add your glue. Move it around a bit in the joints. Dot up on the inside and close up with the pliers. And again, we do our counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. And release. Now I seem to have got a little bit too much on there. So I just with a bit of a tissue, wipe off very quickly. Otherwise the tissue will stick to it. Just to clean it up a little bit. Move over to the last corner. We will still rotate. So it's Again, spread it around. Some on the inside. And squeeze together. Then we give it a count of one, two, three, four, five. And that's held nice and firm. We will still rotate nicely. So now we have to add the glue to the various joints. So we add a little bit see where I'm putting it and then a little bit on the top of the spreader try not to get it on the wheel and then halfway down we're on the very end and then we can do the other end Then on the top of the spreader, missing the wheel, on the other side. Right, that's that done now, so at this point we can leave it for about five minutes for the glue to dry. On wagons that don't have a running board, we need to secure the frames in the middle, because as you can see there's a bit of movement there. So what I tend to do there is... Add some more thin super glue, but we do this now. We're just spreading it. We don't want too much in there, just enough to to soak down between the joints. And then again, using the pliers, we need a long plier this time. Just gentle squeeze. Help it with your fingers, try not to damage any of the brake gear, then count to one, two, three, four, five. I should locate it. Again, just a little white with a tissue, just to remove the excess so you don't see it. Let me turn around. And we do exactly the same on the other side. Again, you can see we've got a bit of movement there. Just work it in. It'll find its own way down. Again, squeeze with the finger and the pliers. 
One, two, three, four, five. Then the tissue just mop up the excess. There we go. Right. Now the next job is to check that it runs OK on the track, which is what we will now do. Right, piece of test track. And try and do this while I'm holding the camera. Get on the track. It should run OK. A gentle little push. It runs quite freely off the end. And then coming back the other way. Well, that runs nice and free. And there should be no rock. If there isn't, so we have a working little wagon. We now have to add the brake gear, which is the next job to do. Right, now I've laid out the brake handles. One to go on each side, the locking mechanism, and the part for it to go on. Two pins that go through and a bit of insulation that ties the two together. Now this is a, a, a generic sort of braking system that when it's fitted, it's fitted to all of my wagons. So I've already done a previous video showing this being fitted to another type of wagon, which is what I will show now. Um, obviously it will not relate to this wagon, but the fitting principle is identical. So when we next see this one, then the actual braking lever is already be fitted. Right, the next part to build is lever type brakes. Again, this is a finicky job, which I have to do the magnifying glass. So I'll do a dry run first, so you can see what we have to do. Take one locking piece. We put a spot of glue there. And then we glue this one to the top. Like that. And then when that's glued on there, we then take another one and glue that to the top. Like that. And then having done that, we then repeat it for the other one. So again, we add glue, glue that to there, and glue that one on top. So having done the dry run, we'll now do that for real. But I can't show you because I'm looking through a magnifying glass and I can't film at the same time. So you'll see that when it's finished. Okay, so that's that now glued. As you can see, we now have to add that piece between there to give it some strength. So slide it up between and then put a little bit of glue around it. Okay, as you can see, I've now slid it up in between. And I've just got to add a little bit of glue now. So we add a bit of thin glue. I'll try and do this so you can see what I'm doing. Just a touch. It should go in as a capillary action. There we go. And do that on the other side as well. Right now we have to add the lever type pivot point. Now this can go on either side, but it must go that end. So we add a little bit of glue to the other side and line it up. and push down. So that's that done. Right. The next job is to add the lever arm to this side. So we take the one 
So we've just got those bits there. Let's take the, the piece of brass tube, a uh, brass rod. You pass it through the hole. This is a very finicky job, this bit. And then you take one of the little washers and you slide that over. You sort of hold that with your fingers like that. Because what you're going to do is you're going to feed some glue onto there and a little bit of glue on the back of there. And then you're going to feed the rod into the hole into the other hole and then push all that down and there so it all lines up and glues in position you've got to do that in one foul swoop and that's what we're about to do so here we go now, i've done this a few times and i've cocked it up a few times so a bit of glue on the back a bit of glue on there into the hole lower it down gently push down push down still holding the brass rod and while you're holding the brass rod because if you let go it drop right through just turn him over and then slide the brass rod through until it's flush with the end and then with a bit of super glue just coat the bit on the end and again make sure the rod is flush and then just put a touch of super glue where the rod enters on both sides okay now we have to repeat that for the other side, which is a bit easier. So again, get yourself ready. Trim on his side. Get the one piece now. Put the rod through. Don't forget the washer. Grip it both in again. What we're going to do here again is feed it into the hole, right through the other hole. And at the same time, we're going to glue that down there. So I'm holding the rod, the arm, and the washer. And we put a little bit of glue, and then we feed it through. through the other hole, down, push, while holding the steel rod at the other end. And then again, not letting go, turning it over, pushing in until it's flush. And then adding just a smidgen of super glue to hold it in place. Check the rod is still flush. Add a bit there to the rod and a bit there to the rod. Okay. The next job we take is a bit of heat shrink and we cut that to basically the width of the gap or a little bit less so I snip that off so you slide that onto one end and you sort of kink it to slide it onto the other one And then having got it about halfway, 
we have to shrink it. Uh, the way I do this is with a lighter. There we go. Back down. And we just need a little bit of super glue now on the insides. One bit there. And one bit there. Okay. Right, as promised, we've returned. And we fitted now the brake detail. As you can see. And then on the other side, the reverse link. And all that's now left to do is to fit the buffers, which is a very straightforward job, shouldn't need telling you how to do it. Undo the nut, shake the washer off, into the slot, washer nut on the inside, adjust to the height you want that suits your particular railway, and tighten up, and do the same on the other side. And there you have it, one completed flatbed wagon. All that's left for you to do now is to paint it, and please enjoy it. Thank you very much.